following video is about coffee. It is not about Kofefe. I need a large coffee, black. A large black coffee, anything else? That's it. Okay, just a dollar eight, back on the bill, please. Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Okay, have a great day. Thank you. Coffee. Coffee has become such an ingrained part of our society. I'd be willing to bet if you went around and asked 10 of your friends and family members that I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone that doesn't drink or like coffee. Hit the like button to jump into this conversation about coffee, what it is, what it isn't, facts that you didn't know about coffee. Now, me personally, a number of years back, I switched to black coffee, right? Ditched the cream and sugar, wanted to get a little bit more health benefit out of drinking the coffee. Took a little bit to get used to because it is very bitter. When you first ditch cream and sugar, you get an aftertaste. It takes some getting used to. It took me about two weeks to get used to black coffee. Well, I have a confession. Somewhere over the last year or so, I found this stuff right here. This is ridiculous. International Delight Sweet Cream Cold Stone Creamery Creamer. It tastes like vanilla ice cream. And I hate to admit it, but I'm kind of stuck on this stuff right now. It's not particularly healthy. It's not the worst ingredient in nutrition list I've ever read in my life, but I mean, at the end of the day, how do you achieve the taste of ice cream without fat and sugar? But it is what it is. This makes my coffee taste amazing. I don't tend to buy coffee out very much. Once in a while, I'll grab a McDonald's. Once in a while, I'll grab a drink from another establishment that I'll talk about a little bit later. Generally speaking, I like to brew my coffee at home in the morning. I'm a believer in fresh ground coffee, so I tend to buy whole beans, grind them up right in a little cup right there, throw them in the machine to brew it. Makes it nice and strong. Fact. In recent years, the concept of dark coffee and espressos has gained a lot of popularity and steam. But the truth is, the darker roast has less caffeine in it. When a coffee producer is roasting their beans, the darker they roast it, the more of the caffeine content they're actually roasting out of the drink. The word light roast apparently throws people off because they hear light and they think that maybe it's less flavorful, not as strong, not as much caffeine. But in fact, the opposite is true. Bottom line, if you're looking for a good caffeine buzz, go with a lighter roast. Myth. Coffee will stunt your growth. Admittedly, I'm guilty of purveying this whole wise tale myself. And it really doesn't make any sense. I can think back to when I was a young child. My mother let me have little teaspoons full of coffee, cream and sugar, the whole thing. Do I look stunted to you? Yet, for some reason, for the entire time my children have been alive, I have purveyed this myth that no, 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 you can't have coffee. If you do, it's gonna stop your growth and you won't get any bigger. I don't know why in the heck I did that. There's no scientific evidence whatsoever to show that coffee consumption or caffeine consumption in any way stunts your growth. Sorry. Three hours later. Fact. We commonly refer to them as coffee beans, but they're not actually beans at all. Probably closer to compare them to cherry pits. Coffee comes from a specific plant where these bright red cherries grow, and inside the cherry is a little seed or pit that is harvested, roasted, and that's what you brew. There's not a 100% consensus on how it came to be known as a bean, but the best guess is the word coffee is derived from an Arabic word which, when translated, best translates to wine of the bean. No matter how you look at it, there's no such thing as a coffee bean at all. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that there's really two establishments that I will tend to buy coffee from these days. McDonald's was one of them. Easter egg time. 
if you go back into my video history, way back to the beginning, I think it was like the second or third video I ever made, I talked about coffee. And I talked about the five establishments that I'll purchase coffee from. I'm pretty sure what did not make the list was another spot that I will sometimes buy coffee from nowadays. And that place would be Starbucks. Can I get a uh, coffee frappuccino? We'll go grande, two shots of espresso. I have a friend who years ago was a Starbucks barista, and I remember saying online once how when I had a tough week working on the road, there was a particular Starbucks along one of the interstate uh, rest stops that I would get a frappuccino from. And I'll never forget how vehemently he told me, stop drinking that, it is horrible, it is terrible for you, it is not a good drink. Hi Bill. I'm sorry to say, Bill, my dear friend, I'm still drinking the damn Frappuccino. <laughs> what can I tell you, it's awesome. All right, back to our facts and myths here. Myth. Coffee can help sober you up. There's a common belief that after you've been on a significant bender and you're all kinds of hungover, that a good strong cup of coffee can help cure what ails you. Once again, there's no scientific evidence to back this up. There is a contemporary example of how this is completely wrong. A few years back, when energy drinks were really reaching the peak of their popularity, a product came out called Four Loco. Four Loco was actually an alcoholic energy drink infused with caffeine. It didn't take long before consumers started having some pretty significant reactions to this drink. It turned out to pose some significant health risks. Young, otherwise healthy people having heart attacks, people ending up in the hospital. The fact that the caffeine in the coffee is giving your brain a temporary boost of focus, you're not really doing anything biologically to counteract the effects of the hangover. Fact, there are three recorded instances of coffee being banned throughout human history. The first was in Mecca in the year 1511. Coffee was actually banned on the grounds that it would prevent free-thinking individuals from gathering together and subverting the will of the leaders. Similarly, in 1675, Charles II banned coffee houses on the grounds that dissenters were gathering together to form a rebellion. Two years later, in 1677, Germany's leader, Frederick the Great, was worried about the economic implications of money leaving his country to buy coffee from other parts of the world. So again, coffee found itself banned. One aspect of coffee that hasn't come up in the conversation is decaf. Now, for anyone who's interested, there is one correct way to make decaf coffee. Step one, open the package. Step two, pour it into the trash. Step three, brew real coffee. Myth, decaf coffee is completely caffeine free. Sorry, it's not. The process to remove caffeine from the coffee beans actually only gets about 70 to 80 percent of the caffeine out. So if you're drinking four to five cups of decaffeinated coffee a day, you might as well just go ahead and have one full cup of regular because you're basically getting the same caffeine content. Well friends, that was one heck of a coffee break, but my time is up and I gotta get back to work. If you know some coffee facts or myths, please feel free to put them down in the comments section. And if you know any other coffee lovers that would find this interesting, why don't you go ahead and share the video. Subscribe for more and let me know if you want to see more topics like this. As always, my friends, thanks so much for watching. I will see you on the road.